welcome back to the director's garage. I'm not really boxing anybody. Bummer. <laughs> hey, welcome to all of our new subscribers. We are thrilled to have you. We, me. It's just me. Thrilled to have you guys along for all of the insanity. And there is plenty here to go around. Now, I'm your host and resident idiot, Michael. And today we're going to spend some time checking out the Golden C Audio Neo, which is a super cool looking IEM sent to us by our friends at Audio 46. More on them in just a second. But we're going to check out the good and the... Mm. But first, let's go to a couple of quick headlines. It's been a minute. Adele's new music is finally on the way. This has been a two-year wait. There were delays and COVID and a hundred other things, but she dropped a new teaser video featuring a beautiful chord progression, just a solo piano, no accompaniment or lyrics, just video of her cruising down the road, sheet music flying through the air. She thinks she's moving on or moving out or moving somewhere. But the song is called Easy On Me, and it drops this Friday. Can't wait for that. Next, I'm going to call your attention to the comments below this video. You're going to see a little section down there called the Director's Garage Sale. I, I worked on that a long time. I just want you to... Okay, these are items that I'm selling off to make room for what's next. And I can't discount stuff that much. I'm hoping to one day have enough subscribers to the point where the channel makes actual money. Imagine that. And I can do some killer discounts on the gear that I'm letting go. For now, though, you're going to see my Hugo 2, which I'm using in today's sound check, and the Abyss and the Stax 009S, which were featured in that last episode you guys all watched in droves thrilled me. Love, love it that something I'm doing is actually getting seen by somebody for once. <laughs> anyway, if you're interested in anything, email me at directorsgarage at gmail.com. And those are your headlines for today. Chi-Fi. When I first heard the term used a few years ago, it sounded to me like it had a negative connotation kind of an insult with maybe even racial overtones. I really wasn't comfortable with the term and certainly not with using it. Chi-Fi was being used to categorize cheap, mass-produced IEMs and headphones of a questionable quality that came from China, really Asia, as much as I could tell. But today, it's a term that I happily embrace because the meaning and the negativity behind Chi-Fi has been removed. Today, Chi-Fi represents the highest quality. They are products that invoke some of the coolest graphics and represent some of the greatest values available on the marketplace today. When someone tells me that a product is Chi-Fi, I get very interested because it usually means I'm going to hear something special. And that is certainly the case with today's sound check of the C Audio Neo. Now the Neo comes to us from the fine folks at Audio 46. <laughs> folks, if you haven't been warned, audio46.com is one of the coolest places to lose yourself for an hour or two. It's page after page of the very best in personal audio. They have the best brands. Estelle & Kern, Sennheiser, Head, iFi, and now they've started carrying some of the best Chi-Fi products like Moondrop and yes, even see audio imagine that now <laughs> they price match and they ship fast and free but here's the best part if you click on the affiliate link below and enter the coupon code directors garage at checkout that's all one word you will save an extra five percent on most of the gear they stock that 5% savings doesn't sound like a lot, but it really adds up when you start considering what we spend on our products. People have used that code to save on over $25,000 worth of gear since February alone. It's another way that the Director's Garage is giving back to you and full transparency, you are helping support the channel at the same time. It's so cool. So our main topic today is gold. <laughs> I'm 
sorry. I often do these things because I can, not because I should. <laughs> <laughs> but gold couldn't be more appropriate for today's sound check because we're diving into the C Audio Neo, which is the gold standard at their price, at least based on my first impression. But today we're going deep to find out the fantastic and the flaws of this $1,100 IEM. Now, first up, let's talk ergonomics. The, the fit is terrific with these. Maybe they're a little bit on the tight side, but they isolate very, very well. And then you've got this stunning falling gold bits thing going on here. And let me tell you something. If you ever have the chance to be a pirate, for God's sakes, take the opportunity and be a pirate. Walk the plank. It's like they opened an asylum. I gotta give C Audio props for this cable because this is a stellar effect audio worthy eight weave down to four cable. And then not to be outdone, they have the stunning, and I'll try and keep it from rattling, the stunning Pelican case for travel. This is really forward thinking because they keep your headphones dry and safe. It's a, overall, it is a sweet, sweet package that they put together. And one that I would kind of expect at this price tag, but other brands should definitely take note because this is how you do it. Let's just keep it rolling and go straight into sound properties and I'm gonna start with detail because with 10 balanced armatures, you might expect detail to be a standout and it certainly is. But I wanna talk phase here because when you get 10 separate audio sources in one tiny little shell, Making sure those waves are aligned is critical because they must hit the eardrum completely in time or the presentation is going to fall apart. They'll get soupy. And these stayed nice and tight whenever I threw at them. They present extraordinary clarity. The balanced armatures are fast enough. Maybe they're a little bit slower than some of the, you know, e-stat things that are going on in some of the higher end products, but they never got congested or struggled with complex passages. And what this timing also produces is fantastic imaging. And I get a terrific image out of the C Audio Neo. It's remarkably locked in and it's precise. Instruments dance around the sound stage depending on their placement. It is a delightful experience. I was also able to detect decent depth in the sound stage. Beautiful layering. The imaging is definitely a highlight on the Neo. But the sound stage itself is kind of in the average category, and this is really kind of a technical limitation that IEMs have to navigate. Very few have been able to overcome it. I think of the Sultan and the, and the Odin. Yeah, those will those will give you a little wider sound stage, but yeah, at three times the price, <laughs> you know. Uh, so it's not the case here. You won't mistake these for an open back anytime soon. Now the dynamics are decent, but they're not anything I would classify like as surprising or noteworthy. There's no slam happening down under. They're just kind of there. Next, I'm gonna get into sound structure. And for this, we are talking about bass and we're talking about mids and treble. Starting with the bass, and the Neo doesn't quite impress. There's a surprising amount of bass presence down low, but it's really pretty muddy. If it were an over-ear, it would compare quite favorably to the Meze Empyrean. Not a lot of definition, but plenty of bass. It's like they wanted a bunch of bass in the tuning, but rather than go the dynamic driver route, they just bumped the bass up that was coming out of the BA. Now, personally, I like the sound of a dynamic driver. It's more natural sounding, and it's got that dynamic punch and snap. Again, dynamics, which this IEM was lacking a little bit. What you hear coming out of the Neo in the bass department comes off as a bit thick. Now the mids are the best part of the Neo, at least to my ears. There's plenty of detail happening. The tuning is slightly recessed the way I like it through the mids. It's super fast. It's got presence. Vocals really shine. And it's really what initially grabbed me when I put the Neos in my ears back when I did the sound impression. Very clean sounding through the mid range. This is a total win. 
Now, treble-wise, these things can kind of edge a little bit to the bright side here and there. Again, I, I do think that they kind of are messing with the tuning and pushing the balanced armatures up in those upper frequencies. And the outcome really works for the most part. It works quite well. Are there faster IEMs out there? Sure, but don't discount the capabilities of the C-Audio Neo. These have a really nice treble. Music. And with all the detail that these things were kind of giving me, especially through the mids, I kind of tended to gravitate toward softer stuff on the Neo. I tried a bunch of hard rock. I tried ACDC and Aerosmith and, you know, some of the harder stuff. And the imaging is spectacular. And that kind of like, I kind of started going, oh, maybe, maybe this is it. But the bass is kind of messier and it just is filling up the bottom end. And what I like on hard rock is like a bass punch. Where these really shined was with music that had instrumentation and celebrated that detail, percussion, jazz. I was pulled toward music that takes advantage of the Neo's speed. Now I'm only gonna feature one artist today because I'm trying to get a little more jammed into this episode. So uh, I'm only gonna talk about Amy Mann. Now Amy is a gifted musician and an even more skilled songwriter. Amy first got noticed as a member of the 1980s pop group Till Tuesday out of Boston, and they scored a top 10 hit in 1985 with Voices Carry. It's a beautiful power ballad. Her voice is really kind of laid back, almost unaffected, but it's still delicate and vulnerable. God, she made three albums with Till Tuesday until the band broke up in 1990 so that she could pursue a solo career. Now she decided that the pop music dance thing really wasn't much her lane as much as acoustic singer-songwriter, and thank God. She had critical successes with her first two solo albums, but they didn't chart terribly well. They were good listens, though, but she really broke through again, this time as a solo artist, by composing and singing the majority of the soundtrack for director Paul Thomas Anderson's film Magnolia, another of Paul's epic masterpieces, and Amy's songs play pivotal roles in the narrative. They, it wouldn't have been the same film without them. Amy was nominated for an Oscar for the film's climax song, Save Me, and she performed it at the Oscars that year. The soundtrack is haunting and personal with Chris Isaac vibes. It's very, very well recorded, and it's available on HD tracks right now. Wise Up is perhaps the best song on the album, and it's certainly the most important in the scope of the film. It's also one of my favorite female vocals of all time. Imagine that, we're talking about it. <laughs> the only flaw on the soundtrack, uh, and it's not that I'm not a massive fan of the music, but there were two Super Tramp songs from Breakfast in America that were kind of tacked on to the end of the album. They're kind of afterthoughts. The soundtrack lost the rights to those songs for a few years, and instrumental tracks were subbed on some versions. But really, they, they should have just made the entire soundtrack featuring Amy's songs. Incidentally, Amy is married to musician Michael Penn, who wrote and sang the brilliant 1989 song, No Myth. That's a must listen. Now, if you recognize the last name, Michael Penn is the brother of actor and director Sean Penn. You can check Amy out if you haven't heard of her. She can also be found singing on an episode of The West Wing, but her, even her more recent albums are interesting. She's one of those artists that is always challenging the listener to keep up. She is a terrific artist and a great pairing for C Audio's Neo. The best part about the Neo is that I received this set right after I did the Visioneer 7 sound check, which is an $1,800 IEM that also features balanced armatures. The biggest difference I could tell is that the VE7 tuned the bass out and kept the bottom end fast but tight. Mm. Seriously, you're gonna start with me now? Mind out of the gutter, people, as I was saying, the C-Audio Neo represents a better alternative for $800 less. And if I were considering the VE7, I would jump at the Neo because it will get you what the Visioneer 7 has and at least you get a little bit of bass presence down low. Now, I can give the Neo a recommendation. They have a winning sound and they are plenty fast. But I would also tell you to check out the Canera Nana, which will give you all of the speed of the Neo 
but add crushing bass thump with a dynamic driver and even greater comfort and do it all for just 900 bucks. All right, up next I've got this box right here. Okay, uh, this is a JH Audio product and I won this at Can Jam. Can you believe it? I, I never win anything, I'm just shocked. Well, it's another balanced armature IEM and JH custom builds their armatures, which means that they don't buy them from an off the shelf manufacturer like Knowles. Knowles builds most of the balanced armatures that go into IEMs. See audio, I'm sure those are Knowles balanced armatures. So what have we here? Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap, no match for knifey knifey. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, 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 oh. We've got ourselves the JH Audio Jimmy. Yes, it's the JH Audio Jimmy. $1,300, excuse me, while I kiss the sky goodness. JH did have a set of these at Can Jam, but uh, I didn't audition them. I only listened to the Jolene and the Layla. And this looks like a sleevey case. Sleevey case, safer than cycling. This looks like we slide them on out, and there you go. And, Pwah! oh, never goes well. Okay, so there's an owner manuals here. And then we've got the JH Audio Jimmy hockey puck style case, cleaning brush, ear tips, all foam, product card, sticker, and a tuning screwdriver. One thing that you'll note about the JH Audio products is that you can use a screwdriver to tune the bass to your preference, the amount of bass. Ooh, oh, oh, look at these. Look at these. This is very interesting. Um, wow, I'm taking these in. They're really quite spectacular. Okay, what I thought these were gonna be were kind of a purple and wood thing. And I don't think it is. I think these are all resins that are hardened and they just happen to have little bits of different colors in them. So there's a lot to unpack here. One thing I wanna call your attention to though is check out the connection scheme. There are multi-pin connectors here. These are not two pin, these look like nine pin or something. Let's check out the fit and let's see how they do. All right, they're a little bulky. I think we need to do a, a little bit of a listen here. I don't have a lot of time left, but I'm gonna do a quick listen. It'll be an abbreviated Director's Garage sound impression. All right, going to some Led Zeppelin. They, they do say in the ads for this that uh, they're made for classic rock. And I kind of see it, they're kind of fun. It's got a V shape for sure. Checking out the immigrant song right now. Plant is wailing nicely. It's got good full sound. It's actually have a little bit in common with the K10S that I just got. They sound very thick. I don't think these are detail kings in the way that uh, the K10S has such great detail or certainly the C-Audio or the Canera, which is my benchmark for all of these headphones at this price range. Let's Up in 3 is one of my favorite albums of theirs. Uh, it's so different from what preceded it. It's like they took some of the thunder away and replaced it with musicianship, and it really plays well. It's one of the albums I think that is perhaps held up best of theirs. I mean, 4 is the classic and 2 is a classic. Physical Graffiti is my favorite, but three is really special. It's a big presentation with these. Here's some blues. I like what these are doing, and they favor the tube on the uh, KNN8. Got the tubes turned on. Really seems to accompany this quite well. Oh. The drums have huge impact. Which is fun because I don't think the bass presence is that big, but these have some thunder to them on the drums. There's there's a the snare really punches and snaps. These are great. These are a good time.
Okay, I'm gonna stop here. <laughs> because I've got a big smile on my face because these are really, really fun. And I was playing Led Zeppelin 3 on these, obviously you just saw, and there's just a lot of punch. And, and it's hard to believe they're all balanced armatures because they, they actually do sound a little bit, they have a little bit of that dynamic driver feel to them. Certainly with the attack of the drums, they really do seem like they're, they're punching you a bit. So uh, I want to do some more listening with these, get some slam into them and see, if, see how they react to a, a slammy song. But man, <laughs> what a bunch of fun we've had in the IEM world today. The, the C Audio Neo uh, is a remarkable set and a good value at $1,100. And I got to give a shout out to my boys at Audio 46 for hooking me up with the Neo for today's sound check. And then Jerry Harvey Audio. Uh, I've been meaning to audition their gear for a long time. And I hope that they see their way to send us more to check out. I got to thank them for sending the Jimmy my way. They're a stunning set to look at and even more fun to listen to. I gotta remind y'all to subscribe to the Director's Garage. I don't know. Your subscriptions help bring episodes like these to you. And we're already getting close to that 3,000 subscriber mark. I never in a million years thought when I flipped the camera on 77 episodes ago that we'd be where we are right now. You guys have my sincere gratitude and there's so much more ahead for us. Next up, we've got another Audio 46 blind unboxing. This is my favorite kind of episode to do. I have no idea what they sent us. We'll find out live on the show. I'm also working on my next over ear moves. We know what's getting sold. I got to figure out what's coming in. Don't know yet. I also owe you guys a couple of sound checks. I want to do a formal sound check of the Hi-Fi Men Susvara. I've been spending a lot of time with this headphone and I really uh, want to do a deep dive into its sound and what I'm finding uh, as I'm listening more and more to them. I also want to do a sound check of the John Moulton created K10S, the prestige model that he sent us and built just for the director's garage such a special headphone i've been spending a lot of time with those now give this episode a thumbs up if you enjoyed the show or do the other thing if you'd like to stab me through the neck i can't say i blame you either way and i will see you before you know it 